morning, Floss Two. Jan Hicks of Jan Hicks Creates here, coming back to share a little bit with you, or maybe to share a lot with you. <laughs> a lot going on here. I have piles. We always have piles, don't we? Um, all kinds of different things. Let's see. It is August, Tuesday, August seventh, at almost eleven a.m. 83 degrees and sunny here in Maryland, so that means hot and humid. What's new, right? It is summer. Oh, let's see what's been going on. Um, no news, no more news on the job. At this point, I think we're waiting for HR to finalize the official paperwork. Um, <clears throat> we're still in waiting mode, so nothing to say about that. We had a wonderful time in Orlando at Ben's graduation. Um, it was a lot of fun. You know, it's, it's a small it's a small group. There were probably 40 kids um, in his group split between the game production speciality um, and the visual effects. So you had one group of people that were there to learn um, animation and visual effects to head into the movie direction. <clears throat> and then you had um, the other group like Ben who were learning animation and texturing and um, the whole flow to head into the game production, the game design direction. So um, it was held at the AMC Theater, the a AMC Cineplex in CityWalk at Universal Studios. Um, so that's actually outside of the ticketing area. Um, ben lived right outside of Universal, so that was, has kind of been his scope for the past year. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. I've been pretty much cleared up, but every once in a while I still get kind of froggy. Um, so he's happy to be getting away from the more touristy area of Orlando, one of the more touristy areas. I mean, he is right behind him, behind where the apartment complex is, was the Men in Black ride. So, of course, there's a fence in between and lots of greenery, but, you know, he lived right there. So he's very happy. He's going to be living with a friend um, within, like, his mother's house. Um, for the foreseeable future. He doesn't have any bites on jobs yet. He, of course, is going to basically get what he's taken like a week off, um, working to add more stuff to his portfolio. His instructors have told him there's, a, there's an online site where the artists upload their portfolios for all the studios to be able to, to look and see the animation and the texturing and you know the, the whole realm of, of the work <clears throat> and um, the instructors have told the students that they want to have a good seven to nine pieces in their portfolio and the studios are looking for like when the last upload was that there's activity that the artist is still fully engaged in the process and so Ben will be continuing to create things for his portfolio, taking them into the school, sending them to his instructors to get feedback, um, continuing to improve and to work with the software. Um, in the meantime, though, we do hope he gets some kind of job just to make ends meet. Um, so, but it was great. It was great seeing it. Um, the year flew by. They, they, both of the boys agreed the year just like, wow another year is gone. It was just great being with them, um, even if, we, if it was only for the day. We went to the melting pot um, to eat dinner. That's kind of Ben's special favorite restaurant. Um, it's a fondue place, so cheese fondue for the appetizer, the meal, the entrees are actually cooked. You get They bring out the raw meat with seasoning on it and you have like a broth type thing that you cook the, the meat in and vegetables. So you're cooking them right there at the table. And then of course, chocolate fondue, fondue for dessert. I think I gained 10 pounds in just a day. So yeah, delicious, but holy cow, it's been a while since I've eaten like that. But it was great, it was great to be there. Um, let's see. The 
This past weekend, Ben went down to Sarasota for the weekend to visit friends there. And the reason I'm bringing this up is um, because I was asking him yesterday about how Sarasota was. This has not gotten a lot of play in the national media, but there's a uh, serious ecological disaster happening in the Gulf Coast um, along the Florida coast. I don't know whether it's as far up where Julie is in the Panhandle, but certainly from at least Sarasota South, if not Tampa and St. Petersburg South, I'm not sure how bad it is up there. What I'm referring to is the red tide and the blue algae that is killing the sea life. And by killing, I mean fish in the thousands, manatee and dolphin are um, washing up on shore dead. Red tide is, I believe that it's a naturally occurring event. It's again, algae in the water that builds up. <clears throat> Usually in the Gulf along the Florida coast, it happens periodically throughout the summer, like from June to October, it comes and it goes. It has been a constant for 10 months now. And when it gets this bad, it, it can kill, kill the sea life. It, it, all, it also, when it gets this bad, is a serious respiratory problems. It's almost impossible to be on the beach when red tide is bad. Mike is particularly sensitive to it. At one point um, when we were down there, we, we, we always took walks on the beach, either morning or evening for the sunset. And we tried to go to the beach this one time and the red tide was so bad, we, we made it out of the Jeep and started walking across the parking lot and he started coughing, he couldn't go. As you know, there are a lot of snowbirds in Florida, certainly from Sarasota the whole way down through Venice, through um, Naples, through Fort Myers, it's a very heavily snowbird area. The population in Sarasota triples during the winter. So having the red tide, if any of these older people have asthma problems, have respiratory problems, it's going to be a serious problem for them. Not to mention the whole tourist industry that is based on people coming to the beaches in the summer. You can't go to the beach when it's th that bad. Then you add to this all of the sea life dying. Ben said he tried to go to the beach. He could not because the red tide was so bad. And he said it smelled like death. I don't mean to be a downer, but um, it's bad. Add to that the problem with that's happening with blue algae. Blue algae is a man-made disaster, basically. It is algae that is growing in the waterways because of runoff from fertilizers. And it's particularly bad in the Lake Okeechobee and the runoff from that, which runs into the Everglades. There's a lot of sugar cane farms down there. I wasn't aware of this. There's a lot of sugar farms down near the Everglades. And so the runoff is happening from those areas into the waters and it's growing this blue algae and the wildlife, the sea life can't survive. They can't breathe basically. Um, basically we have to, we have to be better about um, preventing, stopping this before it happens. Um, part of it is climate change, but part of it is just, we are not taking very good care of this planet. And um, I don't, I'm not going to show any pictures. The pictures are devastating. If you're interested in seeing the pictures, you know, we have the fires on the West Coast and we have this happening in Florida. There's just so many disasters out there that, um, but if, if you're interested in seeing the pictures, certainly it's they're easy to find. Um, anyways, this is just something that it's kind of near and dear to my heart. It's a, you know, that area of Florida is just gorgeous, the Gulf Coast, and it's being devastated. It's just being devastated. So wanted to bring it to your awareness um, thoughts. You know, we got to do something. We got to do something. Anyways, on a happier note, um, <clears throat> what I've been up to, not a lot of floss tube viewing um, with all the coming and going 
we were going to be getting ready to head to Canada on Saturday, so um, I'm going to try and get as much caught up as I can. But you guys, you know, I so appreciate you being here, and I know what it means to have the comments and the likes and all the friends joining in on the conversation. And so I try as much as possible to get out there. And of course, I just enjoy connecting with everybody, seeing what everybody's working on, but I'm so far behind. So, um, it's not that I'm not watching. It's not that I don't like you if you haven't seen me around. It's just because I'm so far behind. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm here, just, just not as in touch as I'd like to be. Spending a lot of time organizing my box of goodies. I think most of you saw my video, excuse me, my video that I put up, um, opening my box of goodies from my friend. Um, wow. I, I'm still petting my linen and opening the drawer and ooing and awing through it. Um, I did a little IGTV video yesterday showing my floss and the organization I'm doing. Thought you I'd, I'd give you the picture. The it was dark in here yesterday, so the resolution was really crappy. But so this is this is what it looks like. The little hooks that I'm using are the little lanyard hooks. These are only three quarter inch, so they're fairly small. You can see some of these bags. I think these ones down here, 367, 368. I did these this morning. These are stuffed full of like nine skeins of floss. So you can fit quite a bit in here. So what I'm doing is um, combining her floss with my floss. Whenever I d have, when one comes up that I didn't already have, I um, create a new bag for it. If there's ones that I did already have some, I combine them which is what's happening here. This one slipped off, 369. That's down here. So yeah, that's how I store my floss, and it's in the drawer that has the file, the hanging file folder apparatus. So this just hangs in there like that. So it's quite a process. Um, she kept all of her floss in bags by hundreds, so 300s, 400s, 500s, that kind of thing. Um, so I have to go out and separate all that out. God love her. She, um, I guess because she did keep it in bags, she didn't actually cut off lengths because if you have some left over, what do you do with it, right? If you're storing it just in a communal bag like that. So she would just pull out a length and then I guess separate out like one or two strands, whatever she needed, and just cut those two strands off from the length and then wound what was left back around the, the floss the skein of floss. So there's a lot of um, those ends that I'm having to kind of trim up and pull out. Some of them are so tangled now that I'm just, I'm not even messing with them. I'm just cutting them off and throwing them away because um, it's more of a hassle than it's worth. But so that's what I've been doing, um, getting all that organized. I really have to ha hope to have that done before I go this Saturday because I want it, I want it out of the middle of the floor right now. It's all just in the middle of the floor. Um, and I don't want to come back to that mess. Do you guys do that? When you go on a trip, you clean really well before you go. So when you come home to a clean house, <laughs> that's what I do all the time. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Like I said, I haven't really been watching a whole lot. Um, but I did find a new one. Several of us have, have mentioned her. Her name is um, Cross Stitcher in Paradise, Christine Michelle um, Garrett was um has fallen head over heels in love with her apparently christine lives about a block from where michelle used to live in honolulu so um michelle is just thrilled to find her even if it is a little bit too late for her but i am thrilled to have found her too because um i now know a cross stitcher and a fellow floss tuber on oahu um, I've already told Christine, I think both Christine or both I and Michelle wrote Christine like very stalkerish fangirl um, posts, comments on her videos. So um, we're already planning a sow together. So whether she wants to or not, she has a new best friend. I hope she does. Hi, Christine, if you're watching this, I hope it, it wasn't too weird. Um, I'm not too weird, I don't think. I'm just happy and exuberant i don't know <laughs> anyways um i was watching uh, kelly and joan yesterday the joan and kelly show and it was probably 
Yeah, it was last week's. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm a week behind. I'm always a week behind. When I think I'm caught up, like the next day I'm a week behind. It's it's perpetual. But any, anyways, it was before, like they were just getting ready to kind of take a vacation. Um, but Joan pulled out an old quilt. She had taken a hand stitching quilt class a number of years ago. And she had the top that she showed. And it reminded me of mine. <laughs> I had done the exact same thing many years ago, before marriage, before kids, many years ago. And um, I was going to pull mine out and show it too. I can't find it. Mine was just four squares. I think hers was six. Um, it was patriotic colors. I even had the backing fabric. I can't find it. It may be another one of those things that got passed on um, when we moved. It may be in a box still in my closet. I, I didn't want to pull out everything and look through it. I'll do that whenever um, I'm starting to weed through before we, we pack out. So if I find it, I will let you know. But in the meantime, I did pull out something else. Now I had mentioned these a while ago when I was showing you the little pieces of scrap fabric that I got from um, either my grandmother or my grandmother's neighbor I had mentioned that I had some quilt tops that need to be quilted and so I thought I would show you those today. Let me start with this one. I'm gonna have to stand and back up and I hope I don't I don't first of all pull you off because my microphone's attached or make too much noise with my microphone but anyways this is the first one so, of course, all vintage fabrics. I don't have the faintest idea what this pattern's called. I'm sure somebody out there does, so let me know. Really, I love this. The colors, it's so colorful. Look at that pretty one right there. I love that. Isn't that fun? These are probably scraps of fabric from clothes or something else. I don't know. That one I know I have in my little scraps in my drawer. Um, so yeah, the, this I'm pretty sure it's a full size top. It's all hand stitched. So I don't know whether you can see, but it is all hand stitched. So there's that one that needs to be quilted and finished and whatever, whatever you call it. And then this is the other one. Again, I have the faintest idea what the pattern's called. But this is just like an all-over star type of pattern. Again, all hand sewn. It's not perfect. There's some, you know, the points aren't perfect, but I don't care. I think it's stunning. It's totally not my colors. But again, and it's probably a full because, you know, that was kind of the, si the size at the time. You didn't have a whole bunch of people with queens or kings. Um, <coughs> I really need to get those quilted. I know there's a lot of quilting that goes on in Hawaii. So um, I'm hoping I can find someone there. I'm going to get really serious about finding someone and getting those finished because it's a shame to have those beautiful pieces and not have them finished. So... I think that's all that for um, extracurricular stuff. Let's get to cross stitch. I have a finish slash FFO this time. So this is my second Mania finish. Happily ever after. This is a chart from Glory B from 19 or no from 2002. No. 2002. Yeah, I think the chart was from 2002 as well. She had put 1976 on the chart and then gave you the other numbers to change it to. 2002 is when Mike and I got married. So even though it's, it might be meant for like when you move into a home, I'm considering it where when the home that Mike and I created together, meaning our relationship, um, when it started. So this was a 32 count um, sea foam. I don't remember the brand or where I got it. I think it was just uh, just a, a piece that I got from the stitching post. Totally changed the colors. I think the only thing that's called for is that I used well was picket fence, 
barn gray and black crow. The rest I changed. Maybe the brother in blue was called for too. I don't remember. So I love that. This is a canvas. Um, I actually got some Rit dye and dyed the canvas. It was um, a little tricky to get it to dry. The canvas, whatever they treat the canvas with, even though, you know, I guess they do watercolors on this. I don't know. I'm not an artist. But anyways, I painted it with, I got two colors. I got um, teal and evening blue. And so I did a base coat and did two coats of the teal, put, painted the teal on with a foam brush, just a foam brush, um, dried it with a hair dryer, painted another coat of teal on, dried it with a hair dryer. And then to the little bowl of dye, um, mixed dye, I added some of the evening blue to get this darker color. And that I got uh, one of these here, I have them here, these um, sea sponges and I um, splotched the darker color on to give it kind of a splotchier look. So, I'm happy with this. It's not my favorite finish. Um, it kind of fought me in coming together. I am debating on whether I should also add this. I'm afraid that, oh, stop. I'm afraid that this cording is a little thick. You know, if it were a tiny, tiny bit smaller, it might be better. I'm kind of okay with the black, with just the black. I really like the contrast and this, how it kind of creates a separation. Um, I'm afraid this might be too much, but I don't know, does it need it? What do you think? Does it need something else? Like I said, I'm happy with the black, but I'm not sure that it's finished, I guess. So I'd like your opinion. Should I try and find a white cording that's slimmer than this? I did get, um, I did some shopping at Joann's yesterday and I have a bunch of little stuff to show you. I did get this. This is kind of a, I don't know whether you can see it, this is a white with a silver, a silver twist to it. <clears throat> but I think that's too small. So anyway, let, let me know. But that is done, my second mania finish. So that's kind of exciting. Let's see, then we have whips. <clears throat> okay, so last, I think my last video was July 31st and um, so that was basically the end of my Christmas in July, but I did, since it was still July, the rest of that day, right, I, I do the videos in the morning, I did continue working on Winter Wonderland. So there is my deer with all of his antlers. Well, isn't that spectacular? And then I did do the kind of cream underbelly and white tail on the deer, because that's how deer are to me. So there's going to be a couple birds on his antlers and then the bell snickle Santa is here and another birdhouse is over here and more trees. I'm going to continue to work on this on Wednesday. It will be winter Wednesdays. So there is that one. I took with me to Orlando the happily ever after. That's what helped me to get it finished. That was my on the plane chart because um, it had a paper pattern and it was just easier to have the paper there instead of messing with the PDF on my iPad. My other downtime, which I didn't get a lot of, um, design was Pretty Little India. And I'm looking around because I meant to, I meant to, this one I can pull up. Yeah, this one I can pull up a picture of, and I meant to have that done, and I forgot. So, hold on one second. You know, you try and plan it all out. You try and think of everything. <clears throat> like, I forgot to bring my water in. But there's always something you forget. So, bear with me while Dropbox loads the picture. 
So that is Pretty Little India. So what I have done is, this is the Baha'i Temple here with its pond in the front. I have the reflecting pool for the Taj, started to do the grass. So the next thing I'm going to concentrate on is getting the Taj Mahal done. And then I'll start the other things, although I really want to do one of these elephants. Those are so cute. So that was my that was my downtime, like I said, in the hotel room. I think that's so pretty. I love the colors. Just just joyful, joyful, joyful colors. And then I returned to my favorite Harbor Haven. It's looking very blue in this light. So I haven't got on a whole lot. You know, my plan was to really his, hit this hard, but I didn't take it with me to Orlando. Hit this hard once August started, but I didn't take it with me to Orlando because I knew that the lighting in the hotel room would just be too bad to work on one over one. And that's what this is, one over one on 36 count. I wasn't going to struggle with that. Um, and then since I've been back the rest of the week, I was so close to finishing Happily Ever After, I wanted to concentrate on that. So that's what I did. So I really just started working on this yesterday. So I got most of the bottom of the tree done, work on the branches. There's more branches up here, and then the rest of the scene. And that will look like... There's a kitty. Um, shoot. I don't believe that's the right one. No, it's not. See, again, we try so hard to be prepared. Donde esta? All right, guys, it's for some reason, it's not at the top of my. Oh, there it is. Sorry. All right. So this is scene eight. So you can see. Hold on a second. I am going to lower the brightness because that really helps with this kind of thing. All right. So you can see. It's still kind of blowing out the sky some. Mostly water this time. We have another little island with a house, a little heron. So this is my tree that I'm growing here and another little sheep. So that will get work done here full speed ahead. And for those of you that haven't seen it, although most of you have, this is my Harbor Haven and it's getting too big unless I hold it back. Isn't it gorgeous? Oh. I think this is always going to be one of my favorite pieces. So we will be moving right along with that. Sasha, don't chew the pet plastic. It's no wonder he's sick. He doesn't understand that. All right. My other whip is my Casapinka mystery knit along the crown, the crown wools. We are up to clue five and six. So again, let me try and do this without giving any away to any future ones. So much cat hair. So this is clue five. <laughs> He's chewing on the bag again. That's clue five. And this is clue six. So I'm going to back up here. Hold on to the stuff you can't see. Back up a little more. This is what we have so far. This is what I have so far. And I just love it. I think it's gorgeous. Such wonderful colors. All right, what's next? All righty. So this might, this is going to be a rather short one because all we have left is haul, and I don't really have any um, cross stitch per se. I have no 
patterns. I have some coming from one, two, three stitch, um, but that's only a couple things. And that's just because I needed more of the bags to put my floss in. And just like no pattern can travel alone, no accessory can travel alone. So I ordered a couple patterns with that. So the bits and bobs that I got from Joann's, I got, I showed you the sea sponges. I showed you the twine. And mostly I got this because um, the um, Hands Across the, the not Hands Across the Sea, Hands On Design, Kathy Haberman's designs, the, the ironing ones, that you know how she has the finish with the twine inside the frame and the, the, the design on the mat board hanging from the little clothespins? That's what I want to do. So I got some twine to do that. Which I think will be really cute. Sea sponges. Um, I got some fabric. So I had gotten, I saw this and um, of course just fell in love with it. That's totally my colors. And so that's kind of what I was trying to do with the frame, with the, with the um, canvas. I got this just in case the canvas didn't work out right. I will use this for something. I think that is beautiful. I love that. And then I got this one too as a possibility. Didn't need either of them, so I have them for a future purchase. Now, one of the things that I did, this isn't a purchase necessarily, but um, with the dye that I had left over from the canvas, like I said, I painted and I just, I just put a little bit in a little bowl, added some water and just kind of painted on the canvas. But of course I had all this dye left over and I'm, I'm, a pretty frugal person overall. I blame it on my grandmother who came from Scotland. We're very frugal people. Um, so I took the leftover dye and put it in a larger container and just took, you know, I got all kinds of the linen, excuse me, from my friend. There were a few pieces of white, one of which was um, kind of scraps from a design. She had stitched, if you recall, she had stitched something that I said looked like a fire hydrant to me. I cut that out. That was so much stitching. I didn't want to try and pull all that out. So I cut that out and with the little scraps, I used the little scraps to just play with dyeing. We're using the leftover dye that I had. And I think these turned out cute. So they're definitely modeled. There's definitely more dye on some places, the darker dye and less. In some places, the teal comes through more and the darker dye comes through more in other places. They are much more vibrant than what is showing on my screen. But I think I love them. I love them. I love them. I could very much get hooked on dyeing. One thing I'm curious to play with is dyeing some of the the natural colored linens. I don't know I don't know how not necessarily how they'll take the dye, but what would be the best colors to over dye them with so it doesn't just turn into a kind of mottled muddy mess. So if anybody has any tips, Misty, you in particular, I know you've done a lot. Um if anybody has any suggestions for what colors I can, because I mean, I have a lot of neutrals in that drawer now. And as much as there's a lot of use for neutrals, you know, I'm a color person. So there are going to be some of those that I want to add some color to. I just want to be able to do it without ending up with a mess and then just having to make it some dark color because nothing else will work. So I would love suggestions. Other fabric that I got at Joann's yesterday, I had showed you earlier a, a few videos ago some other Tim Holtz fabric that I got. This is another one of his little eclectic bundles. <clears throat> Just some great, not really any design on them except kind of a speckled print. So just some great background fabrics that I absolutely adore. One of the things that you don't know about me is um, in my life as a digital scrapbooker, I was known as the grunge queen. All of the things I created, not all of them, but most of them had to be torn and crinkled and grungy. In fact, I even, so, so what you do in digital scrapbooking is 
at least what I did. I am not an artist. There's a ton of digital scrapbookers out there who can create, you know, in whether it's Photoshop or um, not in design, but um, the other big one, it's not coming to my brain. They can create their things, their pieces, whether it's line art or, um, well, some people actually draw and then scan that in. But a lot of people can digitally create everything. I'm, I wasn't that talented. I would have to create it analog, <laughs> what do you call it, in real life, and then scan it in and clean it up in Photoshop. One of the things I did, we lived in the other place we lived in Maryland, we lived up the road from one of the creeks coming off of the Magathy River, which is one of the rivers coming off of the Chesapeake. I took a bunch of paper down to the water and scrunched it and muddied it and crinkled it and tore it because that's who I am. I love grunge. I love uneven and, and speckled and so that's why these really appeal. I, I just think these are great fabrics. That's right up my alley. Um, in fact, I tried, I thought about seeing if I could speckle this after the fact, and I decided that would be too much of a mess, and I didn't want to totally ruin it. So, let's see. What else? This is one of the things, this isn't my stitching, this is one of the things I got from my friend Cheryl, CJ. Um, there was another little figure here partially done. I took that out, so now I'm going to make that into a little pillow. And I will probably play with dyeing the rest of that fabric. I got my Alzheimer's Bitsy Bob from, um, from Kelly. And it is the big one. This is going to go in my matching Mama Joan bag, which is, um, excuse me, I dropped something, which is going to be holding Hoity Toity. So this will be my Hoity Toity set. She also sent along her tags one of her tags and her floss card and this also comes with the floss card that you can write on she sent the alcohol wipes so that we can clean it off um this is like so timely if you happen to see my igtv video yesterday i kind of showed you gave you an overview of the little cabinet that i'm keeping most of my stash in and i'll do a better video of that for here at some point too for youtube in the drawer where I have all of the bags with my whips, you know, they're kind of lined up like this, and I have the pull tab hanging down, and I was thinking what I really need is tags on them, because I can't see, even in the mesh, kind of the see-through mesh bags that I, that I got from Amazon, I have to pull it out and examine it. So I wanna have tags on all of them. So, Kelly, thank you. I will be getting more of these. That is very timely. I also got at Joann's yesterday these. They're wooden, um, laser cut, dyed little leaves. I don't know what I'm going to do with them, but like so many of us, I'm getting in the mood to uh, stitch some fall things, and I think those will be perfect decorations, whether for on whatever frame I use, whatever kind of finishing technique. I think those are super cute, and there's plenty of them. And then another Joann's purchase was this. I almost put the Happily Ever After in this, but it was a little bit too small. It's meant to hang this way, but there's certainly no reason why I couldn't make it this way and um, just put a, a hanger up here. I also um, may or may not leave this cording on. I could see taking this off if it doesn't suit the piece that I'm putting on here and replacing it with some other cording, some other colored cording, whether it's like that twist cord, something I make, it's just stapled on the back. So that will be easily changed. So I thought that, and this was on clearance, this was $6. There was another piece on clearance for $5 that I came this close to buying, but I had so much in my bag already that I didn't. I may go back. And last but not least, <coughs> <clears throat> Michelle Garrett's Bendy Stitchy's Alzheimer Auctions. I got the bags from Diddly Daddle Designs. And let me tell you, the colors in real life 
are stunning. I mean, they're stunning on, on screen. And actually, this is this is coming out. It's, it's a little bit brighter, actually. The purple's a little bit brighter on screen than it is in real life. But this is delicious. This is just gorgeous. I am so thrilled that I got this. So there's that. Michelle included a nice note with a harpsichord. The little notions bag that matches. And so inside they have the same matching fabric with her business name on them. And this, I agree with Michelle, these are brilliant. I love that. So pretty. A needle minder, well two, yeah, a needle minder matching. And can I tell you, this is the first needle minder I've ever owned. <laughs> I don't use them, I stitch in hand. I have the magnetic thing on the Bitsy Bob now. I just, I don't need a needle minder but I'll figure out a use for it, you can bet. So, I love it, I absolutely love it. Diddly Daddle Designs, I thought I had left the business cards in here, but apparently, oh, there it is. Diddly Daddle Designs on Etsy, Teresa Adler. It's gorgeous, it's so well made, I mean really perfectly made. Oh, and I wanted to say, speaking of sewing and perfectly made, I haven't touched the sewing machine yet. Like I said, I'm still a little intimidated. Um, I had planned to do it when I came home this weekend, and then there was the box of goodies, and I started organizing that instead. <clears throat> so, I chances are I'm not going to pull it out this week before we leave for Canada. So there's still some Christmas stuff I need to get finished, and I will do that when I get home. I promise. I promise. So in this, I'm going to be putting Harbor Haven because up until now, Harbor Haven has still been in a Ziploc bag. So it now is going to graduate to a real bag. Yay! Boy, that's a good color for me, isn't it? <laughs> love it. Love it, love it. Okay. I think that's pretty much it. Let me check my notes. Come on. One of the reasons why I spend a lot of time at both, oh, this isn't good, at both Joann's and um, AC Moore yesterday, actually, yeah, some of this stuff came from AC Moore, um, is because we took our phones, we have the six pluses, we took our phones for the battery replacement because they were getting so slow. So while they were at MacMedics, I went shopping. So let me see. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Talked about that. Yep, no sewing, but there was some dyeing. Does that count? It's not exactly the same thing, but you know, it's something different. That's my story. Okay, plans. So, like I said, oh, I am going to. There was a lot of you who wanted me to do the flip through of this book. So, I'm going to do a separate bit video. While this one's uploading, well, I guess I can because I'll need it to upload. But anyways, I'm going to do a separate video of this um, and schedule it to go up probably on Thursday. So be looking for that. Um, I may do a stitch with me this week. I'd like to. It's probably pretty unrealistic, though, because I'd have to do that Friday. And Friday, Friday, excuse me, Friday, we're going to be hot into to getting ready to leave on Saturday. So Saturday morning. Hi, baby kitty. Sasha wants to say hi after getting yelled at. Oh, there's a big boy. Sasha. I am not amused. What do you think? So, um, I'd like to do a stitch with me, but it's probably not going to happen. I do want to get back into doing those, though. What do you think? He wants to chew on the cord of the microphone is what he wants. Um... So we leave Saturday morning. I plan, of course, I'm going to be taking Harbor Haven with me. I'm going to be taking Pretty Little India. I think I might take my Do Re Mi thing. I need, I don't know what knitting I'm going to take. I'm kind of relaxing from knitting for a bit, if you will, because of the, you know, whenever you're doing test knits, I did that sweater. So much fur. Um, I did. I did that sweater for my friend Kat, and then I did the, 
Casapinka, um, mystery knit along. And when you're doing that, you're like, go, 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 gotta get it done, gotta get it done. I didn't do that as quickly for Cat as I should have. But um, whenever you're done, you're like, oh, okay, now I can breathe, I can do what I want. Um, so I'm kind of relaxing from knitting now. I'll probably take along the cowl, the Laura Nelkin cowl that I haven't gotten done yet. Oh, and now he's going to chew the bubble wrap. So if you hear bubble wrap starting to pop, you'll know why. I need to feed him. Um, I also have Andrea Mowry's What the Fade that I'd like to get done. So I may take those along. But stitching is going to take a priority. So Pretty Little India, Harbor Haven. But I think what I'm, I'm going to take Do Re Mi as well, my Do Re Mi, because that's a nice, you know, it's on a bigger count of fabric. It is, there's no way I could do Harbor Haven while we're on the road. Um, pretty Little India, possibly, but I need something with bigger holes that's more forgiving because, you know, when you're bouncing around, you know, it, it's hard to stitch. That's why I usually take knitting along on the road trips as well, because it's just easier to knit when we're moving than it is to stitch depending and we're going straight up through Pennsylvania and for you guys who know Pennsylvania you know Pennsylvania roads are some of the worst so it won't be easy going for as far as stitching so <clears throat> I mentioned winter wonderland Wednesdays or winter Wednesdays I'm not actually going to start back into that until we get back from Canada because, I mean, most of the time we're going to be out with our friends and out doing stuff. So it's not like I'm going to have a whole lot of downtime. So once I get back from that, then there will be Winter Wednesdays, there will be Sally Spencer Saturdays, and there will be Chatelaine Sunday, Sundays, as well as Harbor Haven and Pretty Little India and Doremi. And, and then there's the Tis the Season South starts. So we're just going to keep stitching, right? That sounds familiar, doesn't it? I think I know people with that name. Hi, Pam and Steph. I don't know whether you watch me or not, but hi. Um, okay, I think that is it. I'm going to stop rambling. I'm at 47 minutes, so that's actually longer than I expected this to be, simply because I'm rambling and because of Sasha. I need to go feed the kitty. Guys, have a great week. Find the joy. Have a great time stitching. Enjoy your stitching. Enjoy your knitting. And I will see you, see you Thursday for the flip through. Oh, I'm sorry. I see. I keep remembering things. I'm not going to be doing a floss tube next week, um, next Tuesday. I hope to do some little IGTV videos. Of course, I'll be posting on Instagram um, Canadian photos, you know, trips, photos from our trip. I hope to get something up here on YouTube, but it's not going to be a formal video like this. Um, I may take my apparatus along to do a stitch with me. I'm going to have everything with me. But if I do put a video up, it's not going to have the pretty pictures at the front. Well, it might have some pictures. It won't have my music. It won't have the pretty um, front page and end page and all that. Um, but we'll see. You know, we're going to do something on the fly and we'll just have fun with it. So this time I mean it. Have a great day. Have a great week. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye.